Hey everybody, and welcome to another JASP video. In this video, we're gonna continue our exploration of the Learn Stats module up here, the Learn Stats module. Now, if you're not sure where to find the, these modules that I have up on the uh, top bar here, you go up to the plus sign here, you go up to the plus sign, you click on that, and these are all of the modules that JASP has that you can add up to the top bar. Now, all of these are installed with JASP when you install JASP. You just need to check their box if you wanna see them. If you don't want to see them, you can just have the original set of analyses up here with their Bayesian counterparts as well. Um, and as you can see, I have a couple of, of them unchecked, but we're gonna talk about learn stats today. Of course, there's another video on my channel where I give an overview of the, uh, of the module itself, all of the features of it. Today, what we're gonna do is focus on the binomial distribution, binomial distribution. So as we can see, before we jump into the features of the show distribution aspect of the function, binomial distribution, just to point out here, this analysis is in development and has just a beta status. So remember that when you are doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this yellow message up for the, the length of this video. But if you're using this, you can go ahead and click this X button here and it will close this and, and get rid of that. Also in this video, I think what we're gonna do is we are going to just focus on the show distribution. Now in my overview video, I go through generate and display data, estimate parameters and assess fit for the normal distribution. So go check that, check that video out. I have a little card up in the top right of the video at this point on, uh, at this point of the video. So you can go quickly check that. We're just gonna focus on the show distribution. These three require a loaded data set. So you just need to go up and open up a data set over here. So we're gonna ignore that in this video to make it a little bit shorter and just to focus on the binomial distribution as a teaching tool, this, this part as a teaching tool, rather than um, using it as a uh, generate and display data or estimating parameters or fits through a binomial distribution. Because of the beta status, there were some, in, in that video, and you'll see, there were some issues that I think are being worked out or being kinked out. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let the devs smooth out those kinks. But I think the, at the moment, the uh, show distribution options for the learn stats is by far what we want to focus on as far as learning stats, right? So let's talk about binomial distributions. Binomial distributions are distributions that show one or another. So success or not success, pass or fail. So a dichotomous outcome. And so that's what you first start with, with the free parameter is probability of success. So the probability of a success versus a failure or a pass versus a fail, a yes versus a no, probability as a proportion. So we have the P here standing for probability, and then we put our uh, value in here. So by default, it's, this graph here is showing you a binomial distribution for a probability of success is 0.5, which is generally speaking, the most common binomial distribution that you will see in statistics. Not saying it's the only one, obviously, we can put any value between zero and one in this box here. But it's perhaps the most common because we, we talk about uh, dichotomous outcomes as, you know, like flipping a coin, tails and heads, right? So 0.5, of course, is the probability that any one flip will lead to a heads or a tails. So that's what that is showing. And we'll come back and we'll change what that looks like here. But before we continue with messing with the uh, other parameters, uh, I want to grab uh, our display. So by default, when you open up these, you get the distribution function, right? You get the plot of the function. So in all of the learn stats, uh, submodules you will and, and functions, you will um, get an automatic plot that will show. But you can also show other things like the explanatory text. And the explanatory text is really helpful because the devs are do, trying to do a great, uh, great service here by not only giving you what a binomial distribution is, that's the definition here, but then also source that definition with other bits of information. So a couple of peer reviewed publications or textbooks, um, looking at a web web uh, page here that can show its relationship to other distributions, like what how does a normal distribution compare to a binomial, and then list of probability distributions on Wikipedia. Pretty nice, okay? And so, and then when you start adding different things in the options here, it will start adding uh, explanatory text for each of those. So let's take a look here. So the demonstration of the binomial distribution. So if you are a teacher or a learner of stats, this is a great little section here. This demonstration is divided into four parts. Okay, and so when we click on some of these things, we will show what those are. Uh, oh, actually, no, I take that back. So this demonstration is divided into four parts. So we're looking at the first part of the demonstration. The other three parts are to generate and display, estimate parameters, and assess fit. So we're not gonna do those first three, or the second three. We're just gonna do the first part displays the binomial distribution, it's probability density function, cumulative distribution function, and quantile function, right? So these are the um, ways in which we can add that. Although I don't think we get a uh, quantile function here. No, it doesn't look like it. So uh, I think that text might be from the normal distribution. So be aware of that. But then the second part, generate data for a binomial distribution and display descriptive plots, which I think is really great. 
Uh, third part allows you to estimate parameters of the binomial distribution. This is the one that I had problems with on the normal distribution video. Uh, it was, I had was a ton of cuts. I had to um, open and close JASP a few times. So there are still some bugs to be ironed out there. Uh, and then uh, the fourth part allows you to check the fit of your distribution, uh, of a binomial distribution, excuse me, to your data. Now this, of course, the fourth part only works if you have binomial data, right? So uh, a distribution that works on a success failure uh, dichotomous outcome kind of, of design. It, does, it, it wouldn't work for um, continuous data uh, binomial. By, uh, by binom it's just not a binom binomial distribution. Continuous data doesn't fit that. So here are the references, as I said. So here we go. Um, like, we, like I said, you get the probability mass function first. The probability mass function, usually denoted as f of x, is a function of a random variable x that's here down at the bottom, okay? The value of f of x provides the probability that a realization of the random variable x down here, or the probability of a variable equaling our value down here, yields a value equal to x. So important that we have capital X here, which is a random variable, okay, is equal to the value of our uh, measured variable, okay, of our measured variable. The probability mass plot displays the probability mass function of a random variable. The y-axis displays the value of the probability mass function for a particular value of the random variable displayed on the x-axis, right? Okay, so we have here, here we have x, right? And we have values of x from 0 to 10. And that's number of trials here, right? So number of trials to get a certain value here. And what is that probability? And you can see here that we have what is essentially a histogram. But instead of frequency on the y-axis, we have the probability. So if we were to flip a coin, let's say 10, uh, you know, a, a number of times, what is the probability that we would have, I don't know, five and five, five heads, five tails, right? Which is this value right here, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? And these, so these bars are all, all on the whole numbers, only, odd, uh, only uh, even numbers are displayed on this. I wonder if you could edit, no, you cannot edit these graphs like you can in uh, the other plots in JASP. So just note that you can't change your x-axis to show those values. So you can make them bigger, but you can't, can't uh, I don't think that will modify, yeah, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't modify. Oh, well. All right, let me stop playing with it. <laughs> All right, so if I were to get five and five, okay, so five successes, what is the probability of that? 25%, right? Because the probability of, of, of uh, successes is 0.5. But of course, I'm flipping it 10 times. So what's the probability out of that? 25%, okay? And then low values of zero successes. What's the probability of zero successes? Well, probably just above zero. Probability of 10 successes, just above zero if the probability of, of success is 0.5. Essentially, half heads or half successes is going to happen half of the time out of my number of trials, okay? So if I increase this to 20 with the same probability of success, you can see that the probability, oh, this, this y-axis is not great. The probability of success, I think, is 0.2 or, or, or point, no, uh, not 0.2. Uh, it is point, um, what is half of, blanking here in the, um, in the morning time, uh, <laughs> Uh, 1625, right? I think is what it is. Something like that. I uh, check my math on that one. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. I just <laughs> put it there. Um, but as you can see, the probability of any other, and, and that is, uh, again, 10, 10, which would be the halfway point of my trials. So half successes, what's again, half of a half, half of 20. And then we could keep doing this, right? If we do 50 halfway point and hit enter halfway point again is I have this, you can see here, this is one of the issues that I have with JAS plots in general is that the y-axis never really lines up sometimes with values, right? So 0.9 goes across to right here, right? Not up here. So here we have 25, their tallest value. Again, we're taking another half. Okay, so the probability. So as we increase our number of trials, the probability of success um, of high values and low values is low. And so the interesting thing about binomials is that um, they start to look like normal distributions. But of course, we're not talking about frequency. We're talking about probability. There we go. This one works. So if we have 100, right, 50 here in the middle is 0 0.08, 8%. So that's that's working the math there. Now let's go back to 10 trials and change it to this to uh, 0.75, right? So chance of the probability of success is higher than the probability of failure, okay? And as you can see, the graph then becomes skewed here. This plot, this distribution plot becomes skewed. Now, one thing to note when we, when we uh, plot the probability mass plot okay, uh, is that these bars are never touching. So again, not the same thing as a histogram where eventually, uh, because the bars overlap, eventually you're talking about a continuous variable. These are, these are discrete values. And so these bars technically never quote unquote touch. They always represent these uh, bins, okay? All right, let's talk about some of the other, let's change this back to 0.5 because it's a, it's a nice, nice value. Okay, let's talk about some of the other ones here. So we can grab parameters, support and moments, okay? 
So if we click on that, it will give us the ways in which we talk about these distributions. Okay, so parameters probability of success is uh, between zero and one, less than or equal to. Probability is between zero and one. And the number of trials has to be greater or equal to zero. Although, you know, putting a zero in there, not great. But if we did put a one, one trial, watch what happens. You get 50% of zero, 50% of one. There you go. You have a chance to get success or you have a chance to get failure. I think this PMP, this probability mass plot or the probability mass function here, the PMF, really shows you what a binomial distribution ends up working out to, right? So this is where you see the actual value that you put in right here, right? Because it's probability. If I flip that coin, what's going to happen? Am I going to get a heads or am I going to tails? Well, it's 50% one or the other. The more trials you add, the more opportunities there are for other values to pull up. So if I've got five, if I flip the coin five times, how many, uh, how many do I expect? Or what's the probability of getting five heads or five tails, which would be zero in this case. Okay. So I, I like how that works out. And uh, every time you add trials, the probability of getting a, a value in the middle is the highest, but that probability does decrease. And so here's the sport support. This is the logic here. And then um, the moments, um, these are the uh, f formulas for how this is created. So the expectation of X is N times the probability. That's why if I go to, uh, uh, if I change that back to one, okay. So N times 0.5, expected value of X, 0.5. Um, and then the variation of the X variable, which we don't have up yet, but I will show in just a minute, is the N, so the amount of trials, times the probability, P, times the inverse of P. So we take the inverse of P, so here is 0.5, so 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5, and then so we take the expected value, and then we multiply that by, again, the inverse of P, which in this case would be 0.5, right? And so that way, when you do increase N, let's say to 10 again, right, to a factor of 10, that this value goes down, okay? That's great. Now, we can also do the cumulative distribution function, which, uh, again, is a count of the probability from zero to one, okay, zero to one, right? And so as we, uh, it works the same way as a normal distribution, we're just adding probabilities together, which I think is great, right? So that's what you can do with the cumulative distribution function, the CDF, and show um, the process of it increasing. So if I go the factor of 10, increase to 100, that you can see by the time we hit uh, 60 or so, we are asymptoting at one, right? So uh, We've by the time we've hit the halfway point, we are expecting uh, most of these amounts of flips, successes, if you will, to be 100%. Okay, if we were to add them all together, remember, cumulative is uh, similar to summative, if not synonymous in this case, cumulative being summative, we're adding all of the probabilities together. Let's go back to 10. Now, a couple of options here, you can do range of x with that, and you can change that to five, um, and take a look at what the distribution function then changes here, right? So it would be only the half of the distribution, right? So we would expect the other half to be on this side. But of course, it is symmetrical around there. So uh, especially with 0.5, it's going to be symmetrical, but it wouldn't be symmetrical if we change this to 0.75, right? So it would go up and then we're like, wait a minute, where's the rest? Where's the rest of them? Um, so you can restrict your range. You can highlight, let me go back to 0.5 because it looks nice. And then let's go back to 10 here just to show everything. You can highlight the mass of the function as well right, which is down here. And then I don't know if this is correct. Hmm. Or the cumulative probability, which would be one. That's a, I don't know if this actually helps. <laughs> Zero to one, obviously, the cumulative probability shows you that. Although if I guess if you restrict your range, so maybe if we did it this way, that would be up to one. And I don't know if that's, hmm, hmm. I don't know if that's displaying something that's useful for people to show. We can also change our interval for um, x as well. So if we change this to five, uh, if we go back to 10 here, right? So what's the probability of five in this? Uh, in this, you can say 0.62 if we do that. So what's the probability? So this this would help you if you're asked a question like you are many times. What's the probability of, of a z-score being within or being this value? What's the probability of, uh, of, of the cumulative or the probability density function between a z-score of two and a z-score of negative 1.5 or something like that. You, so those are kinds of, these are the kinds of problems that you can do because we can change this to uh, two as well, right? And we can say at this value of, uh, we've got the mass there. I think that's the 0.61 and then the cumulative probab probability. Yeah, so the mass is 0.25, right? 0 0.04, 0 0.25. So if you're going to find the difference between them, it would be 0.21. And then you can find the cumulative probability up to that point, which is 0.61, right? Which is over here. So this works better if you um, are messing with the interval. It looks nicer if you're messing with the interval. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with the highlighting if you're going to leave the intervals as the same as the range because it's just, it doesn't really look all that nice. In any case, that is the binomial distribution feature exercise 
function of the Learn Stats module. Stay tuned for more Learn Stats module videos on the channel. We're going to go through each of them and have been told by the devs that they are working on them now. Like it is a project now and will be updated continuously. So stay tuned for that. Please leave your comments, questions, suggestions, and other feedback down in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.